Oh, I don't know if I could hear me, so maybe you couldn't. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Baker Memorial United Methodist Church. For all of you who are here in this space, for all of you who are worshiping with us online, we welcome you where we are here as a mission, living God's will to love, welcome, and share Christ with all. I'm Pastor John Lozer. It is an honor and a privilege to be in worship with you this morning. And welcome. Good morning. My name is Bill Cope. I'm your liturgist for this morning. And we have a couple of announcements for you today. Today on the calendar, we have two things for you. Right after the worship service, we're going to do a setup for a water giveaway um, at the Main Street entrance. Today, the Clydesdales are going to be set up down at Gray Street, and they're going to parade down Main Street here past us. So it will be nice to put some water out there, and we've got a sign and uh, a nice message to give to people as they go by so they can stop and pick up water. So please help us set that up if you can. It should just take a few minutes. Also, tonight is the big kickoff for VBS. Um, you kind of see all this around us this morning. Um, it's going to be an exciting week. Tonight at 6 p.m. for the whole family, please come by. Uh, it's going to be a fun event. There's going to be an ice cream truck here, and it'll be fun for the kids. So please come by. And also, <clears throat> excuse me, it does say on your What's Happening sheet that there is adult discussion following worship. Because we will be setting up outside, we will not be doing adult discussion. So that will come in the future week. All right. Also, for our contemplative prayer time that we've been doing uh, twice on Tuesdays, because VBS starts on Tuesday morning, contemplative prayer time will be at 630 not 6.40, 6.30 in the evening on Tuesday for anyone who wishes to join me. All right. Okay. Uh, welcome to worship. If you can please join me in a unison scriptural prayer. The message should be on the screens behind me. This is based on Colossians 1, verses 15 through 28. O oh Lord, Thank you for giving us Jesus. He is exactly like you who cannot be seen. He is your firstborn son, superior to all creation. We praise you that everything was created by him, everything in heaven and on earth, everything seen and unseen, including all forces and powers and all rulers and all authorities. All things were created by your Son, and everything was made for him. Jesus was before everything, and by him everything is held together. He is the head of his body, your church. He is the very beginning, the first to be raised from the dead, so that he would be above all others. Lord, we are grateful that you were pleased that Jesus made peace between you and us by sacrificing his life on the cross so that all people could be brought back to you. We used to be far away from you, God. When we rebelled against you, we were your enemies. But you were merciful. Through Jesus' sacrifice, we made peace with you, and now you give us the privilege of coming into your presence as forgiven people. We need you to help us stay deeply rooted in our faith. We need you to help us stand in the hope you give us when we first heard the good news of Jesus Christ. Affirm and renew our faith as we worship you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now if you're able and willing, please stand for our opening songs of worship. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church, we need your 
your power in us. We seek your kingdom first. We hunger and we thirst. Refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize. To see the captives' hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the poor at peace. We lay down our church we pray revive this earth build your kingdom here let the darkness fear show your mighty hand heal our streets and land set your church on fire when the
for everything cries holy oh everything cries holy oh remain standing, what a blessing it is to be part of this community. If you can turn to your neighbors and give them a smile and a wave. Okay, we can be seated. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Amos, chapter 8, verses 1 through 12, from the contemporary English version. The Lord showed me a basket of ripe fruit and asked, Amos, what do you see? A basket of ripe fruit, I replied. Then he said, this is the end of my people Israel. 
I won't forgive them again. Instead of singing in the temple, they will cry and weep. Dead bodies will be everywhere. So keep silent. I, the Lord, have spoken. Israel is doomed. The Lord said, You people crush those in need and wipe out the poor. You say to yourselves, How much longer before the end of the new moon festival? When will the Sabbath be over? Our wheat is ready and we want to sell it. We can't wait to cheat and charge high prices for the grain we sell. We will use dishonest scales and mix dust in the grain. Those who are needy and poor won't have any money. We will make them our slaves for the price of a pair of sandals. I, the Lord, won't forget any of this. Though you take great pride in your ancestor Jacob, your country will tremble and you will mourn. You will be like the Nile River that rises and overflows, then sinks back down. On that day, I, the Lord, will make the sun go down at noon. I will turn daylight into darkness. Your festivals and joyful singing will turn into sorrow. You will wear sackcloth and shave your heads as you would at the death of your firstborn son. This will be a horrible day. I, the Lord, also promise you a terrible shortage, but not of food or water. You will hunger and thirst to hear my message. You You will search everywhere from north to south, from east to west. You will go all over the earth seeking a message from me, the Lord, but you will not find one. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, I will call us to our offertory. Once again, as Jeff is playing, You are welcome, as you feel so called, to come forward and place your offerings in the plates that are on the communion rails. For those of you who are viewing us online, there is a place on our website that you can put an offering in uh, through a credit card. So please take advantage of that if you are willing. And also, once again, as we are listening to the music, let God speak to each one of you through the music, perhaps something that you have not heard God speak to you before, you might hear this morning.
We give you all the praise and glory, most merciful God, because you are the one that deserves it. You have created us to give you praise, worship. And we ask you, Lord, by the power of your spirit to continue to empower us to offer you our praise and worship at all times. We thank you also, Lord, that you have helped us to recognize that there is a need for your church to receive back some of the good gifts that you have provided for us. We pray that you will give us guidance and wisdom to use these gifts as you have called us to use them so that you may be glorified in this community and beyond. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Would you please be seated for the gospel reading. Good morning, all. The gospel reading today is from Luke, chapter 10, verses 32 to 42. The Lord and his disciples were traveling along and came to a village. When they got there, a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat down in front of Jesus and was listening to what he said. Martha was worried about all that had to be done. Finally, she went to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it bother you that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to come and help me. The Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen what is best, and it will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Does anybody have carbon monoxide detectors in their houses? Does anybody ever have a problem with a carbon monoxide detector? So I had one that decided not to work properly this past week. And I went to Home Depot on Friday to get a replacement. And I was able to find the exact replacement very quickly. And I went up to the cashier, and there were two people ahead of me in the line. And the cashier was apparently having trouble finding the UPC code on a product that the guy at the head of the line had brought to him. So we'll wait till the noise goes by. The cashier, I think, asked the gentleman who brought the item to him a question about the product because he couldn't seem to get it to scan. And how do you think this person answered the question? I don't work here. That was it. Loud enough for everybody around to hear. And then the guy that was directly ahead of me decided that he couldn't wait any longer. He turned around. He came towards me without saying excuse me, but he did say the words Jesus and God. You can fill in the rest. Okay? So I moved out of his way, let him go by. And then when I got to the cashier... I looked right at him and I says, I'm going to try to be a better customer for you. And he was taking care of me and I said, he said something about, uh, 
what the guy said. And I said, well, you know, the best thing that we can do is to treat others the, the way that we want to be treated. And I smiled at him again. And he smiled back at me. So I attempted to reduce the harm that he felt emotionally because of what the previous customer had done. Because I know that's the right thing to do. I know that's what God wants us to do. Now, you heard Bill read the Amos reading. And Amos, when he was writing, it was a very dark period in Israel's history. You heard the line about how the people of Israel couldn't wait for the Sabbath to be over, and they wanted to go back to cheating their fellow Israelites in business. And I couldn't help but think, it seems as though we are in, in the United States and maybe in the entirety of the world, a similar dark period of time where people just seem to not want to be cooperative with each other but instead just be, uh, it's all about me and nobody else matters. And did you hear in that reading what the consequences of that action is? The Lord said, I, the Lord, promise you a terrible shortage, but not of food and water. You will hunger and thirst to hear my message. So the reality of that time period, as I understand it in the, in the studies that I have done, is that the prophets stopped receiving messages from the Lord. There was a, a good long, I think over 400 year period between the end of God's prophets giving Israel messages and the birth of Jesus Christ. It's like an intertestamental period. That's because of Israel's lack of love for their fellow human beings and for their lack of devotion to God. Now, in the next couple of Sundays, we're going to hear from Hosea, and Hosea is going to share some of the same things. So Amos and Hosea and some other of the minor prophets were all telling Israel the same thing. But then contrast that with this very short reading that comes from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 10. I'm sure you've heard this one before, the story about Mary and Martha. And Jesus arrives at their house. And what does Mary do? She immediately stops whatever it is that she was doing, and she sits down at Jesus' feet. Now, this will be interesting to see if I can get back up. But she sat down at Jesus' feet because she wanted to hear him. She knew that all of the other things that were going on in her life could be put aside for a period of time because in that moment she had Jesus right in front of her. She wanted to hear him. Martha didn't quite get that. Martha had this desire and this need to be hospitable, and I understand that. That's, that's important for God's people to do. But Jesus said to her when, when she complained to him, she has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken away from her. What is that better part? The better part is to hear the voice of the Lord in the moment that the Lord's voice is speaking. And that's what Mary was experiencing. Okay, give me a moment. There we go. Back up. Yay. <laughs> now, I've shared with you what my experience has been with my study of the Disciple Bible study in the past. But I just want to share one other thing about that. When I started reading the book of Acts, I couldn't get enough of it. I didn't want to stop at the end of the lesson. I wanted to continue reading because I wanted to hear more of the Lord's voice. 
I was hearing the Lord's voice speak to me through those scriptures, and I wanted more of it. Just like Mary, when she saw the Lord come and he wanted to, to share God's word with them because it had been so long since Jerusalem had heard the word of the Lord because the Lord stopped speaking after the prophet Amos and after the prophet Hosea. She wanted to hear him. And I had that experience in that, that transformative time in my life. I think that's something that God desires to do for each and every one of us. That we would begin at some point to hear something that God wants to share with us. I knew the moment I walked out of that Home Depot store that I was going to share what I had experienced in that moment. Even though it wasn't real pleasant when this one guy almost knocked me down as he's walking away from the, from the cashier, but I knew, I knew that there, I had to use that as a contrasting experience. And because I have had this experience with God, I knew that I needed to uplift that cashier. I just knew it. I had to do it. So I pray, whenever it is, either later today, maybe out in front, for those of us who will be out there handing out water to the people who will be watching the horses go by, or maybe sometime during our VBS week, maybe this evening, for those of us who will be there, and we will greet our neighbors when they come for the ice cream, or who knows, wherever you find yourselves this week, in any situation where you recognize that there is somebody else who needs an uplifting word, remember how you have experienced God in your life, how that has been uplifting to you, and share that uplifting with someone else who is downtrodden. Thank you, Lord, for the grace and the mercy that you have given to each one of us. We pray for more of it, Lord. So pour into us as we come forward this morning to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. Pour into us new and fresh anointings of your uplifting spirit so that we may share it with others who need to be uplifted in such a time as this. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Please join me in this invitation to Holy Communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who welcome him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. The United Methodist Church, in the United Methodist Church, we celebrate Holy Communion with an open table. That means all are welcome to receive Holy Communion, the gift of God. Join me in this prayer of confession. Almighty and all-loving God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have reconciled the world to yourself. Help us now to be reconciled to one another, that again we might dwell in the warmth of your love. Inspire us to your Holy Spirit to put aside the cloak of pride and take on the mind and heart of Christ, that we might forgive and be forgiven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now take this moment for silent confession.
hear these words of pardon. May Almighty God, who caused light to shine out of darkness, shine in our hearts, cleansing us from all our sins and restoring us to the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. I will be on page 13 in the hymnal, and the musical responses begin on page 19. If you wish to follow along in the hymnal, the responses will also be on the screens. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We do give you thanks for all that you have created, for all that you continue to provide for us, and especially that you provide for us spiritual food in this sacrament of Holy Communion. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and then he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was finished, he took a cup. He gave thanks. And then he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the cup of my blood. It is the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon all of us gathered here, upon those of us who are watching online from home, and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. 
And as redeemed people, through the sanctifying blood of Jesus, let us pray the prayer, sing the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. This morning the ushers will guide you from around to this side of the sanctuary. Who are our servers today? Servers, please come forward. Uh, please come to this side with your hands ready to receive the bread. Come to the middle, receive the bread. Come to this side, and a cup will be offered to you. Come over to the edge where there's a receptacle. Receive the, the juice, and then drop the receptacle in the receiver. I will be off to the side if anyone would like prayer. If you need gluten-free, please let uh, Rebecca know. And also, if you prefer to be served in your seat, just raise your hand and Connie will bring the elements to you. The table is ready. It is open to all. Please come and receive the gift of God this morning.
Amen. Would you join your hearts and minds with my words as we offer prayers of intercession this morning? Merciful God, thank you. We are so grateful that you have fed us spiritually once again this morning. I pray that you will give each one of us clear understanding as to how you are ministering to us through this worship service, through our prayers, through our hearing of the word, and through the sacrament of Holy Communion. Grow our faith, Lord, so that it may spill over and others may recognize the light of Christ shining within us today, this week, and beyond. And we are grateful, merciful God, that you give us this privilege to come before your holy throne at any moment with our prayers, especially when we come to intercede on behalf of others. For you have asked us, Lord, to treat others as we desire to be treated. And we know and have longed for others to pray for us when we are in need of help, healing, and wholeness. And we come before you now as the ones who are seeking that help, healing, and wholeness on behalf of others. We lift to you Karen, Cindy, Sandy, and Sumi, who are all in need of physical healing, most merciful God. For all those medical personnel whom these special people of yours, Lord, are being ministered to by, we ask you to give them guidance, direction, and wisdom. We ask you, Lord, in the midst of the healing process through medicine, wherever that medicine falls short, Holy Spirit, fill in the gaps. We also lift to you, Kathy, Janae, Kim, Colleen, Bridget, and any others in this moment that have come to our minds. We lift them to you now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for giving us this instruction to stand in the gap when others do not know or are unable to pray for themselves. Father, we lift to you people who are oppressed, those that are in this community, those that are in this country, those that are in other nations who are oppressed in so many different ways. We lift to you those who desire to be sources of affirmation and grace as we struggle to be those sources of affirmation and grace. Lord God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, empower us to do this because we know we cannot do it without you. And wherever there is war, in Ukraine and beyond, for those who are perpetrating the war, Lord, we ask you to stop it. We ask you to change the hearts and minds of those persons. They will recognize the evil that they are doing and they will decide that it is wrong and choose a better way, a peaceful way to settle differences. 
Father, we ask these things because we know you have called us to come before you in prayer. And we ask you to remind us that we can pray no matter where we are, no matter what time of day it is, no matter what we are doing, that we can pray even as simple a prayer as, Lord, have mercy upon us. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. It is for him that we live this faith. Amen and amen. Would you stand as you are willing and able to sing our closing hymn, which is number 532 in your hymnals in front of you, and the words will also be on the screens. Jesus, Priceless Treasure. Though the storms may gather, still we have peace within. That's a promise from the Scripture. That no matter what is going on outside of us, when we have the Holy Spirit living within us, 
we will have peace within. So I pray that when you find yourselves in situations that might become explosive, hang on to that inner peace. Demonstrate it to whomever else might be in that situation so that they may see the light of Jesus living within us. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Thank you.